Matthew 6, verse 8, in the beginning, his desire is to meet our need before you've ever asked the need. But if you see yourself as just an old worm, if you see yourself as somebody that's not really quite qualified, doesn't the word say he qualified us into his beloved? So you've qualified. You don't have to keep doing laps trying to qualify. You are qualified. Because if you're a believer in Jesus, if your heart has been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb, if your life is set on course to follow the kingdom of God, then you qualify. And when God says, seek first the kingdom, all of these things will be added to you. So God's looking to add to you, not take away from you. How many know we don't serve a takeaway God? Right? We used to always cringe when we'd sing that song, you know, Lord, you give and you take away. Remember the song that, and Sand would always kind of reword it because God doesn't give things and then take away things. You need to get this because sometimes, well, you know, God took away my job or God took away my spouse. You know, he died at an early age or whatever. God doesn't give you something good and then have it just there to say, well, now I want to take it away. The enemy does things like that. So you need to look at this in the right context. But how do you ask God for things if you think that sometimes God does and sometimes God doesn't? If you're, if you're unsure about God, you're going to be really hard to come into his throne room and say, well, by the way, I need grace and help in my time of need. But after all, God, if it's not really what you want for me, or after all, God, if it's not what your word says is for me because I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the word in a distorted way. Now, there's a difference between... When God says, by Jesus' stripes, you were healed, that's a positive. You know that God is not going to take that away from you. Okay? You may question, should I go to, you know, Hannah's in the middle of applying for university. Should I go to this university or this university? In that case, it's not clear in the Word. So you would want wisdom. And so the Word says, if any man or woman lacks wisdom, let them ask of God. And so God will show you that. Okay? But maybe God will increase a desire in her heart to go to a certain one, you know? And, and so you can believe God for that. So you want to understand that, you know, now, when we say, does God give and does God take away? God is a giving, loving God. If there are things that are not good, God could instruct you and say, those are things that aren't healthy for you, and maybe it would be good that they would go away. But not in the context of healing, or he's not going to try and make your company go bankrupt to teach you something, or, you know, things like that. Those are not the desires of the Father. He would want to show you correction and say, you need to kind of get some of this stuff pulled together, or this could happen. But God's not that takeaway kind of God. He wants to give you wisdom. He wants to give you understanding. If, if your marriage goes completely down the tubes, God didn't take away your marriage. There were some choices that you and the other person were making that eventually that went away. Okay? But God's not the author of that. Okay? Can God turn it around? Absolutely. Can God bring you hope? Absolutely. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. Let's go over and do Ephesians And this is something that um, we need to really begin to, because if you don't have a right understanding of what God has for you, again, we're trying to look at healing. If you're wondering if it's God's will to heal, then you're never ever going to stand in faith. And so this is a scripture here that you could begin to pray every day to begin to see your life through the eyes of the Father. And so let's look at this. It says, For this reason, I bow my knee to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. Now before we go too much farther, recognize it says, you are his family. You are his family. You're a child of God, you're a son and you're a daughter. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 14. Now, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, in the strengthening and might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ would dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, and depth, and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes all understanding, that ye may be filled with all of the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power or the authority that works in us, to let him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Now, I want you to notice here, he loves and cares for you. He calls you his family. But he also wants you to have an understanding. Notice it said that, that Christ may dwell in your heart, verse 17, through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love 
if, if you think you love God and you, you draw back from God because you're afraid that God is a God with a big club with a s spike sticking out the end of it, or God is a punishing God that says, you know what, after all, you haven't talked to me since Wednesday, therefore you're really going to pay till Tuesday. If you view God that way, you're going to have a really hard time. But it says that you would be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, length, and depth of his love. Of his love. God wrote this. I didn't write this. I know this seems convenient right now, but God loves and cares for us. Religion says that you're going to be judged. God says, I love you. Okay? So he says, you're called the family in heaven. There's a real and intimate uh, a, a relationship that God wants to have with you. Religion is harsh and cold. If you do this, then this happens. If you don't do this, boy, look out. And so we've really got to begin to get away from that. So Jesus came to reveal the Father's love. Some have been taught that, uh, uh, you know, all of these things, remember we said, seek first the kingdom of God, and all of these things will be added to you. Some religious people would think that God's trying to take away from you. Some religious people would begin to think, well, you know, sometimes God does, sometimes God doesn't. But he said, in love, he said, all of these things will be added to you. You know, let's not wait for Christmas to have things added to us. Let's begin to realize that God wants to add peace, joy, love, victory, healing, wholeness. How many know we can begin to stand on wholeness? How many know we can begin to stand on the provision of God and say, you know what? Having done all to stand, I'm going to continue to stand. And so that's what God's got. So the Bible says, have no worry or anxiety or fret. Begin to trust God with your life. And he'll begin to take his place. Let's go with me to Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah 31. We want to just look at a few scriptures here. Jeremiah 31, verse 3, it says, The Lord has appeared of old to me, saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn to you. I like the next little part. Again, I will build you, and you shall be rebuilt. You shall be rebuilt. Maybe you feel like your life's in the middle of the destruction stage. How many know God says, I'm going to rebuild your life? Amen? Amen. But I want you to notice, what does it say there? The Lord appeared of old, saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Yes, therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. With loving kindness. Now, if whatever is going on in your life is not full of love and loving kindness, it's safe to say it's not of God. If you say, but pastor, my life feels like it's a wreck right now. God said right there, I'm going to rebuild you. I'm going to begin to rebuild you. God's going to do a frame-off restoration in your life and begin to make it better than it ever was. Okay? You need to recognize that. Go with me to John 14. John 14. Verse 23. John 14, verse 23. We're going to start reading actually in verse 21 and kind of move right through it. And it says, At that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And he who has my commandments, he who has my commandments and keeps them, is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. So, we're going to keep reading. It says, Judas, not a scare, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will make yourself manifest to us and not to the world? And Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my commandments. He will keep my word, sorry. And my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. For he who does not love or keep my words, the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So, what we're talking about here is, walking in love and keeping the word of the Lord. So in keeping the word of the Lord, let's because right away we automatically think, I want you to catch this, we automatically think all of the things that we're doing wrong to not keep the word of the Lord. We just momentarily ago read about God's loving kindness. 
So if you're not operating in God's loving kindness, then you're not operating or keeping your abode with God. See, immediately we think religious. Well, you know, I, I, I haven't been getting along with a co-worker. Or, you know, I've been talking a little bit of slander. Or it's, it's, it's always about what you haven't been doing right. But I want you to also take the scriptures, and those are things that we need to examine. Don't get me wrong. But we also need to take the scriptures where he says, he's loved us with an everlasting love. Have we taken that for granted? Have we not received that and said, well, that can't be for me? See, we're always good to have it for somebody else, but God says, I've loved you with an everlasting love. So when you lay in bed at night, when you say, you know, I don't know if I can sleep, the word says he gives his beloved sweet sleep. He's loved you with an everlasting love. And so that is stepping up by faith saying, that is mine. That is for me. Whatever your situation is, you know, we like to say, well, it's for, you know, it's to heal your, your broken uh, finger and, and it's to heal your, your broken bank account. But God also wants to heal your broken heart. He wants to take whatever your situation is and say, I want you to receive my loving kindness. I want you to receive my wholeness. He'll keep my word and the Father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. How many of you know God wants to move right in with you? Amen. You want to cohabitate with God? Amen. But notice it says we need to make, he wants to make his abode with us, but it's our responsibility to let him in. Amen. It's our responsibility to open that door. Amen. Amen. Keep